The Imperium of Man in the 42nd Grim Dark Millennium of course has its armies and warriors that bring upon death and destruction to the heretic the Xenos and the demons alike. These warriors are armed with the best the Imperium can offer. Well, at least for the elite soldiers like the Assassins, the Space Marines, the Sisters of Silence and Battle and the Custodies. And for the rest, they are bolstered in their incomprehensible numbers, namely the Astra Militarum but sometimes no amount of soldiers or handheld weapons can be enough for a battlefield. In such situations, the Imperium must turn to deadly, unforgiving and unbiased weapons of mass destruction, of which there are quite a few types that exist in their arsenal. Here in this video, we will take a brief look at 10 of these, from the ones that were developed in the 20th century, the second millennium, to the incomprehensibly futuristic and fantastical entries. So let's get to it. Number 1. The Atomics of course, the first type of these weapons of mass destruction that comes to mind are the nukes, the atom bombs. They were first invented in the second millennium, which means the 20th century, which kind of tells us that maybe somehow the ancient history of the 40k grimdark is parallel to ours right now. And just like what we made, there are also the fission and fusion of thermonuclear bombs and warheads that the Imperium has. Their explosive yield can range from the kiloton tactical warheads to the ones that are in the range of hundreds of megatons, which are termed as planet busters and are sometimes used for exterminators. The atomics create a massive fireball and shitload of thermal and kinetic energy as well as electromagnetic pulses as the first stage of destructive power. Then comes the radioactive fallout that renders the environment uninhabitable for decades and even centuries. Number 2. The Modalis Phosphex Warhead the Modalis missile warhead is another type of weapon of mass destruction which was used widespread by the Imperium up till the 40th millennium. They were produced en masse via a lone STC that the Mechanicus had preserved in one of their forge worlds. See, this warhead uses phosphex as the main destructive compound, which is a highly incendiary substance that burns even without oxygen or oxidizers and without a need for fuel. Also known as the living fire, the crawling death, and the ice fire due to its attraction to movement and surprising sub-zero burning temperature, this weapon, when it is unleashed, a green cloud of phosphex expands exponentially, burning everything in its path until there is nothing to burn anymore. Phosphex has an even longer deadlier after effect than a nuclear fallout as it stays there for centuries, waiting for new substances to ignite it and unleash another wave of green fire. The Modalis is an exterminatus level weapon that is launched via orbital platforms and burns even the atmosphere of a target planet. Number 3. The Virus Bombs Virus bombs are devastating weapons that deploy a genetically engineered pathogen known as the Life Eater Virus, which was designed to eradicate all forms of life on a planet. They are famous for their use during exterminatus actions. So the virus, which would be released in aerosol form, infects every living organism including plants and microscopic life. Within just minutes, if it is dispersed optimally from orbit, it can breach sealed environments including protective suits and power armor. Infected organisms suffer a gruesome fate. Their cells rapidly break down into a sludge of organic matter. This decay releases large quantities of highly flammable gases, which is primarily methane and other hydrocarbons. Any ignition source such as a spark or a lightning strike can trigger a planet-wide firestorm burning the surface and consuming most of the remaining oxygen, rendering the planet uninhabitable. Surprisingly, even though it seems to be the prime weapon against Tyranids, the virus bomb has become near useless against the Nids since they have evolved immunity towards the Life Eater virus. However, if the planet still has substantial plant and animal life, the resulting firestorm could deprive the Nids of biomass and also still burn quite a lot of them. Number 4. The Two-Stage Cyclonic Torpedoes the Cyclonic Torpedo, a formidable Imperial weapon deployed from Void Crafts in low planetary orbit, is exclusively authorized by the Inquisition and sometimes by the Adeptus Astaris for Exterminators, which is a measure reserved for worlds which pose a galaxy-wide threat. There are two types. The first variant is the exotic two-stage cyclonic type, which is designed for use on atmosphere-less or biologically void planets. These torpedoes are equipped with two-stage warheads, the first stage is an exceptionally powerful melted charge that penetrates the planet's crust and mantle, allowing the second stage to reach the core. Then there, the second stage is a modified cyclonic plasma charge, 
which explodes and destabilizes the core and results in the planet's obliteration and total destruction from within. Number 5. The Atmospheric Incinerator The Atmospheric Incinerator Torpedo is another variant of the Cyclonic Torpedo and it is an Imperial weapon designed for mass destruction. It is deployed from space into low planetary orbit and it triggers a thermonuclear chain reaction within the atmosphere of the target world. This reaction rapidly consumes all free oxygen, initiating a planetary inferno that incinerates the entire biosphere into ash. This devastating weapon is exclusively used by the Imperium of Man's armed forces for exterminatus actions. And upon detonation, the warhead ignites the oxygen-rich atmosphere, engulfing the entire world in a blistering conflagration that eradicates all signs of life, turning metal into molten slag and even rock into glass. The planet may burn brightly for weeks or even for a whole solar month as was seen in the case of Medusa 4. Number 6. The Vortex Warhead The Vortex Warhead, also known as the Vortex Missile, is an exceptionally rare and advanced form of warp-based ordnance, reserved for use in the most desperate situations by the Astra Militarum, also by the Titan Legions and the Imperial Navy. This recovered archaeotech relic from the Age of Technology resembles a large ballistic missile and the main tech is obviously in its warhead. Unlike conventional explosives, the warhead contains a complex mechanism similar to a warp drive which is used in Imperial starships. And when detonated, it creates an uncontrollable rift into the immaterium from rail space, obliterating everything within its blast radius. But once unleashed, the warp vortex can wander erratically, consuming all warp energies in its path and destroying both friend and enemy alike. Number 7. The Speranza's Exotic Weapons So here in this entry, there are quite a few types of weapons clumped in together as there is limited information about their functionality and also history. But we can assume that they emerge from the Dark Age of Technology and are preserved and maintained by an STC aboard the Speranza ship of the Mechanicus. See, the Speranza is one of a kind arc of the Mechanicus and it is the size of a continent. The vessel was discovered by an accident at the forge world of Palomar. Dating from the Dark Age of Technology, the Speranza was equipped with radical weapons which include temporal and even gravity manipulation weapons. There are mentions of it having chronometric cannons which uses time as a weapon. It also has antimatter projectors which has near incomprehensible explosive power. It has a weapon of mass destruction in the form of a black hole projector which creates an event horizon that sucks in everything within a radius of several miles. And of course, also a hypometric cannon, which just deletes everything from existence, even space. Number 8. The Exterpatic Conversion Beamer Also known as the Conversion Beam Projector, it stands as a rare and fearsome relic from the pre-Horus Heresy era, likely originating from the technological peak of the Dark Age of Technology. This weapon harnesses the devastating power of antimatter, firing a concentrated beam of antimatter particles that trigger a cataclysmic matter antimatter reaction upon impact with its target. Its design allows it to maintain formidable effectiveness even over long distances, with the beam's intensity actually increasing the farther it travels until it reaches a critical distance. The Exterpatter Cannon is essentially a scaled up version of a Titan Grade Conversion Beamer boasting immense power and an extraordinary range. This colossal weapon is capable of unleashing such devastating force that it can effectively obliterate an entire battlefield. Number 9. The Sonic Disruptor So sonic weapons are a category of weapons that inflict harm by emitting powerful and tightly focused sound waves, inducing vibrations on the target until the target ruptures or fractures under the massive and intense sonic pressure. While these types of weapons are famous amongst the noise marines of Slanej, the Imperium also has quite a few of these here and there. The Sonic Disruptor represents one such super heavy weapon employed on an enormous Mechanicus Ordinatus vehicle. This formidable sonic weapon is capable of demolishing buildings and stripping flesh from human bodies with ease. Upon discharge, its sonic wave propagates across the battlefield akin to a colossal explosion and a shockwave that renders the entire war zone and everything else silent afterwards. And number 10. The Talisman of Seven Hammers This is a one-of-a-kind relic and a weapon that sits at the very heart of Terra and was originally created to be a compass-like instrument by the Primarch Vulcan. 
This is one of the only weapons that can actually delete and give true deaths to demons of the warp. Since every other time a demon is killed or slain, it manifests again in the warp after a certain amount of lapsed time. The talisman was in fact a weapon that was designed to destroy terror in the worst case scenario if Horus was to win the civil war, the Horus Heresy. This weapon was theorized to engulf the entire planet in flames and will kill humans and demons alike. Hence, it was also termed as the Dead Man Switch. Fortunately, it can only be activated by Vulcan and only if there is no hope for the planet anymore. And now we can't seem to find Vulcan anywhere, so we're safe for now. So those are the 10 weapons of mass destruction that is currently employed by the Imperium. Now, if you like this video, then watch this other one as well. And if you want to browse for other Warhammer content, then check out our channel. So subscribe and like for support. And yeah, while you're at it, bang on that bell icon for notifications on new video uploads. Till the next time, take care, boys.